declaring open war on God. As of January 22, 2021, on the 48th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, a Supreme Court case in which the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a woman's right to terminate her unborn child 62 million babies have been aborted there and over 1.6 billion in the entire world since 1980. On the same day, the new administration announced in the past four years, reproductive health, including the right to choose, has been under relentless and extreme attack. The Biden-Harris administration is committed to codifying Roe v. Wade and appointing judges that respect foundational precedents like Roe. White House Statement. January 22, 2021. Whitehouse.gov. This codification would allow for legal abortions even in the event that the Supreme Court overturns the 1973 ruling. Thus, with this recent statement, the U.S. government has declared open war on God. For as Pope St. John Paul II warned, The Lord's question, What have you done? Which Cain cannot escape? is addressed also to the people of today, to make them realize the extent and gravity of the attacks against life which continue to mark human history. Whoever attacks human life, in some way attacks God himself. Evangelium Vitae, The Gospel of Life, N10. This is a grave action that cannot be underestimated especially in light of recent prophetic warnings from heaven on this website. As Catholics, no matter one's political stripe, it is our duty to speak against this grave evil that jeopardizes the salvation of many, undermines the civility of society, harms the emotional and spiritual health of the parents and the future of nations. Given such a grave situation, we need now more than ever to have the courage to look the truth in the eye and to call things by their proper name, without yielding to convenient compromises or to the temptation of self-deception. In this regard, the reproach of the prophet is extremely straightforward. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Pope St. John Paul II, Evangelium Vitae, The Gospel of Life, N58. Consider these warnings in heaven's messages. St. Michael the Archangel to Luz de Maria de Bonilla on December 30, 2020. Premeditated abortion is a crime against the gift of life. God blessed humankind, and it has responded with aberrations against the gift that it has received. The divine word is not respected. Those who are in charge of guiding the people of God do not apply heavy sanctions needed for this generation to desist from other aberrations. Deliberate abortion is a crime permitted on earth, and because of this, we suffer in heaven at the hardness of the human heart. Remember Cain. He killed his brother Abel and God passed sentence. God, faced with the evil of this terrible sin, said to Cain, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Genesis chapter 4 verses 10 to 11 Whoever consents to the practice of an abortion should repent, confess, and turn away from this terrible sin. Our King and Lord Jesus Christ sees inside every human being and deals with each soul on its own. Our Lord Jesus to Jennifer on January 4, 2021.
My child, those who have committed these unjust acts upon my little ones, within the womb and outside the womb, are bathing themselves in the blood of the innocent. When they seek to destroy my creation, my plan, know that the hour of justice is coming. It is in the blood of the innocent that mankind will find that his hour of reckoning has come. Our Lady to Gisela Cardia on January 3, 2021. Many are the nations that have turned their backs on God's laws and made others their own that have nothing to do with the divine. Children, pray for those who have promoted laws concerning abortion, because their suffering will be great. And our Lord to her on September 26, 2020. You watch what is happening, but with indifference, and yet the time is over. Ah, abortions, euthanasia, it all comes from evil, yet you are calm, as if everything ought to go back to how it was before. Be assured, my children, that nothing will go back to how it was before, soon you will see the world change. Everything is over, yet you still do not understand. Why do you not listen to my mother, who still gives you the grace of being near to you? Saint Michael the Archangel to Luz de Maria de Bonilla on June 20, 2020. People of God, the virus that is keeping humanity in suspense has come as a prelude to the great trial that will befall all humanity, the unraveling of the shame of this generation that mourns those who suffer, those who die from this virus, but ignores the innocent who are continually sacrificed through abortion. Echoing the ecclesiastically approved message from Akita Japan that, if men do not repent and better themselves, fire will fall from the sky. God the Father allegedly said to Father Michel Rodrigue. As the star, followed by the wise men, stopped over the manger, the chastisement from the sky will not hit the Christian families devoted to and protected by the Holy Family. The fire from the sky is a chastisement for the horrible crime of abortion and the culture of death, the sexual perversion, and the cupidity regarding the identity of man and woman. Finally, read The Coming Collapse of America to understand how America's role in spreading, enlightened democracies, around the world with foreign aid contingent upon other nations embracing abortion, gender ideology, etc. has, in part, brought them along with the entire Western world to the brink of judgment. The threat of judgment also concerns us, the Church in Europe, Europe and the West in general. The Lord is also crying out to our ears. If you do not repent I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Light can also be taken away from us and we do well to let this warning ring out with its full seriousness in our hearts, while crying to the Lord. Help us to repent. Pope Benedict XVI, Opening Homily, Synod of Bishops, October 2, 2005, Rome. And contrary to what some Catholics have alleged, Pope Francis has been anything but silent on this issue. Our defense of the innocent unborn, for example, needs to be clear, firm, and passionate for at stake is the dignity of a human life, which is always sacred and demands love for each person, regardless of his or her stage of development. Pope Francis, Gaudete et Exultate, N101. So great is the value of a human life, and so inalienable the right to life of an innocent child growing in the mother's womb that no alleged right to one's own body can justify a decision to terminate that life, 
which is an end in itself and which can never be considered the property of another human being. Pope Francis, Amoris Laetitia, N83. How can we genuinely teach the importance of concern for other vulnerable beings, however troublesome or inconvenient they may be, if we fail to protect a human embryo, even when its presence is uncomfortable and creates difficulties? If personal and social sensitivity towards the acceptance of the new life is lost, then other forms of acceptance that are valuable for society also wither away. Pope Francis, Laudato C. N120. In the last century, the entire world was scandalized by what the Nazis did to ensure the purity of the race. Today we do the same, but with white gloves. Pope Francis, General Audience, June 16, 2018. IOL.co.za. Getting rid of a human being is like resorting to a contract killer to solve a problem. Is it just to resort to a contract killer to solve a problem? How can an act that suppresses innocent life be therapeutic, civil or even human? Pope Francis, Homily, October 10, 2018, France24.com.